Well, guys, welcome to church this morning. I've already been worshiping. How about you? Amen. God is in the house. Give him a hand. <laughs> Folks, today we're doing a case study of the book of Jonah, and we're going to be talking about him and his life. And you've been getting an email each week telling you where to read so you'll be familiar with a passage so you'll know where we're going and what's going on all around us. And last week we talked about you could run, but you couldn't hide. Jonah, he was given a God assignment. God told him to go preach to the people of Nineveh. He had a different outlook on it. When God told him to go, what did he do? He went, but where did he go? The other way. God said, go, these people are wicked. The city is wicked, but I'm going to spare these people, and I want you to go and be my messenger. I want you to go talk to my people. Tell them what's on my heart, and call them back to me, and call them into repentance. And Jonah he was like me many times. He was a stubborn person. He just wanted to do it his way. And God said, your ways aren't my ways. And God kind of got his attention, didn't he? And today we're going to be talking about Jonah and his God-given assignment and how when God spoke to him and he said, go over here, he didn't even sway off to the right or the left. He did exactly the opposite of what God told him to do. Now, can you relate to that this morning? Has God ever spoke to you and said, go do this? or go do that, or whatever, and instead of doing just a little bit, you just turned and went the other way. I know I can, many, many times. God said, go do this, and I'll just run the other way, and I'll try to figure out things. Well, today we're going to be talking about Jonah, a study in stubbornness. How many of you out here have ever been stubborn? Let me see your hands. How about if you hadn't, but your spouse has? Let me see your hands. Okay, you see, we know what we're talking about, don't we? So we're going to be talking about a case study in stu stubbornness. Jonah chapter 2, if you would, please take your Bibles and turn to Jonah chapter 2, verse 1 from the New Living Translation, and we'll put it up on the wall in the front and in the back. If one of them goes out, you can always look at the other ones. We're having a little bit of difficulty. But also, if you don't have a Bible, we would love to give you one after the service. We've got Bibles available to give everyone here, and we encourage you to read your Bible, to pray every day, and to seek the Lord. And it's all about reaching people for Jesus. That's what Valley Church is about, and it's about discipleship also. Because we feel that we need to accept Christ as our personal Savior, but we also need to grow into his likeness. And without the proper discipleship, we don't do that. We go back in our old ways. Y'all know what I'm talking about there? We get saved and we love Jesus, but then the enemy comes in and stuff starts happening and life starts happening and we start going back the other way and it's easy to go back into the world that we come out of. Well, in Jonah chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Then Jonah, then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from where? Inside of the fish. We covered that last week. Jonah had ran the other way. Well, God sent a fish after the guys on the boat threw them overboard. God sent a big fish that come up and swallowed them and took them off into the sea. Well, then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from inside of the fish. That'd be a rough place to be, wouldn't it? I talked about that last week, and I thought this week I've been in the belly of a whale for a couple of days. I don't know if y'all have or not, but I've been sitting there going like, God's trying to tell me something, and I'm sitting there going like, I've already been in it one day, God, and I figured this out, but then I go into the next, the next day, and I think that's where Jonah was at. He didn't get it after one day. He had to stay three days. How about y'all? Do y'all get it the first day? How many second dayers in here, or third dayers in here, fourth, fifth? Jonah finally got it after three days, so he did better than I done. So anyway, Jonah, he prayed to the Lord his God. He realized that God was God, and he was not. When he's in that fish, he realized that he needed the Lord, and he realized that it was time to reconnect. Now, let me say that again and look at the screen. It is time to reconnect. When you've lost your vision, when you've lost your purpose, and when life feels like it's not going your way, and when you're in the belly of a fish, when you're down and out and things are tough, it is time to reconnect to Jonah's God. It's time to reconnect to our God. You know what, Jonah? He had the same God that we have today. It's time to reconnect. See, Jonah had run from God and deliberately disobeyed him. Let me say that again. Jonah had run from God and deliberately disobeyed him. Have you ever been there? 
I know I have. This is a relevant message. God's told me to do something, and I was like Jonah. I turned, and I ran, and I deliberately disobeyed him and went the other way. See, folks, it's not our knowledge. We have more knowledge today than we have ever had in our life. There's more Bibles available. All of us has it available on our TV, on our iPhones, everywhere. The knowledge of the Word of God is out there. But we are disobedient people. Do you agree with that? Look all around you. Look at the nation. Look at the news, whatever. Jonah had run from God and deliberately disobeyed him. Jonah knew what he was supposed to do, like we know many, many times, but we deliberately disobey God. Again, we have knowledge. We know Scripture. We know more Scripture than anybody has ever known. We know all these books of the Bible. We get self-help books. We get Experiencing God from Blackaby. We get daily devotionals from Joel Osteen, Joyce Myers. Everything's out there. We, we've got the knowledge. The thing is, we just don't want to do what it says. We are disobedient. We read God's Word, and we know what we should be doing, but we say, huh, we're going to do it our way. We're going to do it our way. I didn't get many amens from that. Y'all disagree with that? We do it our way. Well, Jonah, he was at a place where he could run no farther. Look at that on the screen. Jonah could run no farther. You ever got there? You've ran from God. He's told you to do something. You've deliberately disobeyed him. Then you've got to a point, where did Jonah have to go? He didn't have anywhere to go. He's in the belly of a fish. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Have you ever said in your life, well, my life's just a mess? I've tried everything, and I have nowhere to go. It might be being God trying to get your attention and saying, come back to me. A lot of times we have to have nowhere to go. We've got to be at the very end before we come back to God. It was time for Jonah to reconnect. Then Jonah's life, it had been spared. Jonah's life had been spared by what? By God's grace. Our lives today, folks, has been spared by God's grace. All of us. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And when it says all, it don't mean some. It means all, every one of us. Jonah's life had been spared by God's grace. And God's grace means his merited favor. It's our, his, he, it's our, it's God's. We don't deserve it, but God gives it to us willingly, just like he gave Jesus on the cross for each and every one of us. See, Jonah, he had time to react. Jonah had run from God and he had deliberately disobeyed him. Then Jonah knew that he could run no farther. And then Jonah's life had been spared and he realized it was only by God's grace. Jonah chapter 2, verse 2. Look at, look at that for a minute. We're just studying the Bible. Passage by passage, he said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble. And what? And he answered me. Folks, have y'all ever cried out to the Lord? And he answered you, you know that it's him answering you. You know that you know. It was God, it wasn't anybody else, that God answered you. Maybe God called you into a situation. God told you to do this. He told you to do that, the other. Maybe he called you to go talk to someone, to help someone out, whatever. And you know that God answered you. He says, I called out to you from the world of the dead. And Lord, you heard me. He's in the belly of a fish. He knows he's dead. He's in the bottom of the sea. It's as dark and black as it can get. And he's down there for three days. I want to read it again. He said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble. This is a guy that it's at his very end. He's at the end of his rope. Have you ever felt like you was at the end of your rope? And you just could not make it. And he answered me. And I called out to you from the world of the dead. He shouldn't have been given a second chance, should he? But you know what? God's a God of second chances, and thankfully, he's a God of tenth chances and a hundredth chances and a thousandth chances. I called out to you from the world of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. I think it was at a time when Jonah was in that belly, and he was probably thinking kind of like the psalmist was thinking as I was. One of you guys text me this week, Psalm chapter... 139. 
I believe this was probably where he was at. He was probably crying out to the Lord, and David, the psalmist, he was in distress, and he was in trouble. And Psalm 139, 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you, God, and lead me along the path of everlasting life. This was David's prayer in Psalm 139, but I believe it would have been Jonah's prayer when he was in the belly of the whale. Maybe, maybe you're at the end today, and it's time for you to come back to God and allow God to search you. Again, Psalm 139, 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. See, God knows our hearts. We can come in here looking as good as we want to on Sunday morning. But guess what? God knows our hearts. He knows our hearts. He says, test me. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. Folks, we don't want to have anything in our lives that would offend a holy God. Do you agree with that? Yeah. We need to get our acts cleaned up. I told you all for the last few weeks, the church has let society down because the church hadn't been what it's called to be. We've got prayer out of the schools. We've actually got prayer out of the churches, too. I've, I've, I've been told by other people that we shouldn't be preaching about the blood and singing about the blood and things like that. It could be offensive to people. So, you know, that's just kind of how it is. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts, my anxious thoughts, God. Point out anything in me that offends you, God, and lead me along the path of everlasting life. It's time to do a spiritual check, Valley Church, and Dan and all of us this morning. We need to be examining our own hearts first. And you got somebody sitting beside of you. I know you might think they're a mess. We all were a small church, and we know each other. And if you think this message is for them, it's probably for you. And uh, we need to be calling out to the Lord and say, point out anything in me, Lord, that offends you. Anything in my life that's taken me away from you. Anything in my life that's drawing me closer to sin instead of closer to you, God. we got stuff in our life like that. It draws us nearer to sin instead of nearer to God. We need to go back to God this morning, all of us. Jonah, he was at that point. He cried out, and he cried out to the Lord, and he was in trouble. He said, I called to you from the world of the dead. That might be where you're at this morning. You're at the end. But guess what? The good news is what? The Lord heard him, and the Lord will hear us today. All we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he hears us. Good news this morning. God hears. Look at that. God hears. He hears us this morning. Wherever we are. Now, do you know God knew exactly where Jonah was? He knew he was in the belly of that fish because he put him there, right? Do you know he knows exactly where you are today. He knows exactly where you're at and exactly where I'm at. He knows our hearts. He knows our hearts. He sees everything. He allowed us that we've got this thing called free choice and free will. I kind of don't like that. I think he shouldn't have given me so much free will. You know why? Because I make too many poor choices. I'm a flunky. I don't get it. I make too many poor choices. He gives me choices. He gives me decisions that I make each and every day, and I need to examine my heart and say, God, is what I'm doing today drawing me nearer to you or nearer to sin? The decisions that I make today determine my tomorrow. God hears us wherever we are. See, in spite of Jonah's actions, in spite of his actions, his prayers were still heard. That's a good news for us today. In spite of our actions, in spite of whatever we've done yesterday, day before, in spite of our actions, our prayers are still heard by a holy God who loves us, who never, ever gives up on us. Even in the belly of the fish, Jonah's prayer was heard. Wherever you're at today, your prayer is heard. See, Jonah... He knew he had been at death's door, and his life had been spared by God. God spared his life. God sent the fish. You know the story, we read the story last week. Jonah's on the ship, and the ship's sinking, and the storm's big, and he figures out that he's the problem, and he tells the crew to throw him overboard. They do. The fish comes by, swallows him up, and he's in the belly of a fish, and he's not dead yet, but 
at that juncture, he's still sitting down there praying. He's saying, God, I'm in the belly of the fish, and it stinks down here, and it's dark. I've never been anywhere like this, and it's the worst situation that I've ever been in in my life. But he still knew that he was at death's door and that his life had still been spared. I think right there at that point, he says, I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. You ever feel like you're almost dead? You're almost dead. You've been through it all. You're almost dead. But the good news this morning is none of us is dead yet. We might feel like it and we might look like it, but none of us is dead yet. Put on your happy face. You're at Valley Church. Welcome to church this morning. This is where we come to make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> God hears us wherever we're at. Jonah chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Look at that. Jonah 2. Let's look at this. Jonah 2. Now, he's talking to God. This is an conversation between him and God, kind of like a dad would have to their son. You threw me into the ocean depths. He's talking to God here. Look at that you. You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. I was right here. Now, I, I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then, Here's this I again. Then I said, Oh, Lord, you have driven me from your presence. How will I ever again see your holy temple? Five times Jonah calls out to the Lord personally. He either uses in this scripture the word you. He uses the word you or your five different times in these two scriptures. This was a personal conversation, personal conversation between Jonah and God. You remember God answered Jonah? Jonah's talking to him, and God's answering him. Jonah mentions God five times. He mentions himself five times through I or through me. Why does he do this? Because Jonah, he was in a place of hopelessness. You ever been there? Huh? Somebody? Y'all ever been there? I don't believe this message is for this church. I probably should have preached it down the road or over at Life House. I might go over there Wednesday night and preach it for Brother Jerry and say, hey, your people needed this. Ours didn't need it. <laughs> They've never been in a place of hopelessness. So have y'all ever been in a place of hopelessness? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. I'm like Sergeant Carter. No, nobody knows where, who that is, but I can't hear you. Y'all know my sermon illustrations as I get older, the younger generation forgets them. Jonah was in a place of hopelessness. See, without God, there was little hope for survival. Without God, there's little hope for survival. Y'all know that in your life? Without God, you don't have any hope. There is no hope in this world. Nothing in this world will give us hope other than putting God first. Then our life is complete. It's when we put him first, make him first in everything. See, Jonah, he was in a place of hopelessness. And then he realized without God, there was little hope for survival. So Jonah's separation from God was the greatest loss of hope, was the greater loss of hope. He had never been separated from God like he was then. He couldn't see the outside world. He's in the belly of a fish. Everything's as dark as it could be. He's separated from everybody, and he's separated from God. He was in a place of hopelessness, dark, dark end of his rope. But Jonah acknowledged God's hand of discipline was on him. He acknowledged that. Jonah acknowledged God's hand of discipline was upon him. See, folks, children need discipline. Do y'all know that? Our children need discipline. Our grandchildren need discipline. More than that, we need discipline. We need to have discipline and structure in our lives. Back to Psalm 139, verse 23. This type of discipline that I'm talking about is, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you, O God, and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Lead me. We all need discipline. Our kids need discipline. But we need discipline just as bad as they do. Because we don't get it either. We get in the belly of a whale many, many times. Jonah chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Let's go back to the text. 
I sank beneath the waves, and death was near. The waters closed in around me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. Man, this is deep, isn't it? Deep, nasty, dark. No hope. I sank down into the very roots of the mountains. I was locked out of life and imprisoned in the land of the dead. In the land of the dead. But you, but you, O oh Lord, my God, have snatched me from the jaws of death. Yawning jaws of death. Mm. You ever been there? Been in the pit? Been in the belly of a whale? Your life's hopeless? Made one poor choice after the other? Everything around you is just crumbling in? And God just reached and he snatched you from wherever you was at. I know there's been many times in my life he did it over 20 years ago when I came to know him and I accepted him as my personal savior. He snatched me from the pits of hell. I was headed on the highway to hell, and he reached down and he snatched me and grabbed me out of it. He does the same for each and every one of us. He did it to Jonah back then. Why? It's his, it's his unmistakable grace. God's grace is unmistakable grace grace. Why? Jonah, folks, was powerless to save himself. What do y'all think? Do you think he could have saved himself in a belly of a whale at the bottom of the ocean? Is there anything that he could have done? Anything whatsoever? He didn't have any nine millimeter or no kind of valley church militia with him. He didn't have anything. He was in the belly of a whale with nothing. Nasty seaweed around his neck. You know, it's a bad place to be. He knew he had God's unmistakable grace. He was powerless to save himself. It's a familiar place. I realize I'm powerless to save myself. I can try to do it over again time and time again, but without God, I'm nothing. I can go through any three-step program, 10-step, 12, whatever, but without God as a source of my strength, I can't do it. Jonah was powerless to save himself. Jonah, he had no avenues of escape. He was totally dependent on God to bail him out, to get him out of the belly of the fish, right? He was totally dependent on God. He had no avenues of escape, none. Have you ever been there? A lot of times I have. I'll sit there and I'll do it my way and I'll try to fix this, that, or the other. And when everything else failed after a week or two or a month or two, then I'll just stop and say, God, can you help me? Huh? How long does it take you? It's kind of come clean morning. How long does it take you? Jonah had no other avenue of escape. He knew that Lord had to deliver him. We've got to figure that out for ourselves. We know we've got no avenue of escape. That We, we are totally dependent upon a holy God to deliver us. Now Jonah acknowledges the very hand of God, snatching him from death's door. Total dependency on God. That's where we need to be this morning. That's good news. That's where we need to be. When we're totally dependent on God, we're doing good. Because we realize we can't do it our way. We're going to do it his way. Look at Jonah chapter 2, verse 7. When I had lost all hope. You ever been there? Okay. When I had lost all hope. What did he do? Y'all read that for me. Now, how many times have we done that? We mess up when I've lost all hope. I turn my thoughts once more to the Lord. God, I'm sorry I won't do this no more. I won't do that anymore. I'm going to put you first today. I promise. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to serve. And it lasts for about two days or two weeks. When I had lost all hope, I turned my thoughts once more to the Lord. And I did say earlier, the Lord is a God of second and third chances, didn't I? And my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. Good news this morning. Good news this morning. In your holy temple. See, Jonah here, he was backed up against the wall. He was backed against the wall. He was up against the wall, backed up. Jonah had to lose all hope before he was ready to turn back to the Lord once again. You ever been there? You got to lose all hope. 
Your marriage has crumbled. Your finances has crumbled. They'd went as south as they could go. You've lost all hope. Jonah had to lose all hope before he would get his act together and come back to God's what it says, right? Jonah had to lose all hope in the world and his possessions and everything in it. Jonah had to lose all hope before he was ready to turn back to the Lord once again. See, this wasn't Jonah's first time that he messed up. How about you? Was this your first time that you've messed up or your second or third or your tenth or your twentieth? Jonah, he had to lose all hope before he was ready to turn back to the Lord. Jonah turned his thoughts toward God. What did he do then? Then, when all else fell, like in my life many times, he began to pray. God, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Bring me back to you. He was probably sweating all kinds of Anxious thoughts was going through his mind. He knew he was dying. He, he was at the end. But he came back to God. He began to pray. Jonah chapter 2 verse 8. Jonah 2 8 says, Those who worship false gods turn their back on all of God's mercies. We see that all around us today. Those who worship false gods turn their back on all of God's mercies. See, they don't get the grace because those who worship false gods miss out on God's grace and on his mercy. We can't worship everything else. We've got to worship Jesus Christ. That's who we've got to worship. Don't be worshiping false gods, the gods of this age. There's all kinds of things going on around us. See, any idol that we have in our life, regardless of what it is, any idol takes God's rightful place. Any idol takes God's rightful place, and our God is a jealous God, and he does whatever it takes to bring me back to him. Whatever it takes, he wants to bring me back to him, and he wants to bring you back to him. Whatever it takes, he wants to bring us back to him. Got any idols in our lives this morning that we're putting before God? Food for thought. Any kind of idols. I told you all to marinate on that last week, but any food for thought any idols that we're putting in front of God that should have God's rightful place. Jonah chapter 2, verse 9. Jonah says, I will offer sacrifices to you. I will offer sacrifices to you, O God, with songs of praise. And I will fulfill all of my vows. For my salvation comes from what? The Lord alone. We've got to get that. We've got to get that, for our salvation comes from the Lord alone. See, when we're messed up all week, and when we fail one, one time and time again, and we come back in here for this new start and new beginning, and God's tender mercies that are renewed on a daily basis when we repent and come back to Him. See, this is where Jonah was at. He had realized that he was hopeless, and now he's coming back to the Lord. Kind of like we did this morning, we came in here worshiping, singing songs of praise, seeking the Lord with all of our heart, and coming back to him and saying, God, I'm going to fulfill my vows to you, for my salvation comes from you and from you alone, Lord. See, Jesus does make us new this morning. Regardless of how bad we've been and whatever's happened, Jesus gives us a new start. He gives us a new beginning. He makes everything new. What did Jonah do? Jonah realized he was in a mess. He was in a pickle. Like many of us today, we've got to realize it. What did he do? He had time to recommit. Recommit. We don't hear those words anymore, but we need time to recommit. Now, Jonah, he didn't bargain with God. That's important. I wrote these things down. Jonah didn't bargain with God. Many times... I want to bargain with God. God, if you'll do this, that, or the other, I will do this, that, or the other. Let's make a deal, God. You know, y'all ever been there? Let's make a deal, God. Jonah had time to commit. He didn't bargain with God. He realized he could not fix himself. He realized he was in the end. It was dark, and he had no way out. And without deliverance from the Lord, without deliverance from the Lord, he would surely die. He also, jo Jonah... He didn't try to make excuses for his past actions. 
He didn't make a bunch of excuses. He really didn't. He didn't come up with, he had the victim mentality. Y'all know the type. Something's always wrong, and they got wronged, and blah, blah, blah. Jo Jonah, he could have made all kinds of excuses, and he could have played the victim. No, he manned up. He didn't make excuses. He didn't bargain with God. He didn't try to make excuses. Jonah renewed his commitment with God. He said, God, you called me. I've turned. I went the other way. But now if you'll just give me one more chance, God, next thing he did is he surrendered to the call on his life. We've got to do that this morning. We've got to do that. We've got to surrender to the call on our lives on, on our lives this morning. Jonah surrendered to the call on his life. Have we surrendered to the call on our lives? Jonah chapter 2 verse 10 says, Then the Lord done what? He ordered the fish to spit up Jonah on the beach. Pretty good story, right? Pretty good story. Pretty good ending for Jonah. I thought he was doomed here a little while ago. But God bailed him out as he always does for me, and he always does for you. He bailed him out again. Jonah surrendered his call. Then the Lord ordered the fish to spit up Jonah on the beach, and he did. It did. Do you realize God's in control of the fish back then, and he's in control of your life, your finances, your attitude? Everything that we do, God is in control. God's in control. Let's see what happened next. Then the fish obeyed the Lord's command. Y'all see that in the story? Factual events here in the Bible that really did take place. The fish obeyed the Lord's command. He obeyed. First the Lord tells the fish to go swallow him, let him float around in his belly for three days. Then he tells him when to take him over there and throw him up on the beach. That's the kind of God we have. He's in control of everything. Now, Look at the last point here of the day. What happened to old Jonah? He was delivered safely on the shore. Amen. Safely on the shore. We got a God that wants to deliver us safely on the shore this morning. All of us. He knows us all by name. He knows how many hairs are on our head. He created us in his likeness, in his image, and he comes after every one of us. Jonah was delivered safely on the shore. Folks, we got Jesus in here this morning, and he's saying, I want to deliver you from whatever it is. Wherever you've been, wherever you've gone, maybe you've run the other way, but today is a new start, and it's a new beginning, and all you got to stop is do is recognize it. Recognize the height from where you've fallen. Recognize what you're supposed to be doing, and just come back to me this morning. We've got a God that calls us back to him. Let's pray. Father God, today... We thank you that you're a God of love. God, we thank you that you're a God of mercy. You're a God of forgiveness. Today, Lord, as we've been looking at our lives, as we've been looking at this book of the Bible of Jonah, chapter 2, that Jonah had one chance after the other, and he kind of went the other way. But we see here at the end, he did come back to you. He realized he needed to pray. He realized that, that he needed to quit being so stubborn and come back to you. God, today, work in our hearts. Is there areas in our hearts where we need to turn over to you right now? We're saying we've been stubborn, God. You've told us to do this or you've told us to do that, but we've just been doing it our way. And it's in services like this that we can come back to a holy God who gives us forgiveness and gives us renewal. If you're in here this morning and God spoke to you, and you're saying, hey, I've been where Jonah's been. I want to come back to God this morning. I want a new start. I want a new beginning. Would you slip up at your hands so I can pray for you, please? Just slip up your hands. Amen. 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 See your hands. Amen. Amen. Would you pray this prayer with me, please? Father God, just forgive me of my sins. Give me a brand new start. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Give me a brand new beginning. I repent. I want you to do a new work in me today. Thank you, God, for your love. I thank you for forgiveness. 
Thank you for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.